Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to another live session. In today's live session, we are going to talk about some of uh, activities and things that you can do to stimulate your dog. Five stimulating games that you can do with your dog. Uh, and also, I'm going to answer your questions. If there are any questions, go ahead and ask me in the live chat area. All that and more in today's live session. If you want to learn the negative effects of treat training, which causes your dog to develop bad behaviors and health issues, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about our next video. Welcome, welcome to another live session. We are ready to go with our my five uh, stimulating games that you can play. Uh, with your dog to get them stimulated, not only uh, mentally or emotionally, but it's healthy to have these activities to be done with your dog. Let me just uh, make sure that everything is working fine. Um, there we are. Okay, I have everything ready. And before we get started, I'm just going to um, make an announcement. Let me just uh, bring out uh, the file that I need. Uh, Windows, uh, where is it? There we go. That one. All right. Okay. So uh, next week, um, Thursday, April 25th, I'm doing a master uh, class workshop. Uh, it's a 90 minute workshop that you are invited to join. Uh, it's called Mastering Dog Training Essentials, a crash course for busy dog owners. Uh, we're gonna, you're gonna learn how to enhance your training skills and strengthen your bond with your dogs. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and also in the chat area. Uh, let me just go ahead and put that in the chat area. Uh, not that one, it's this one. All right, it's in the chat area. Let me see, sound is okay. Video should be okay as well. So yeah, I'm doing a live workshop. Uh, um, up to 20 uh, students can register for this uh, workshop. Uh, it's on Thursday, April 25th, 2024 at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and it's $29.99 Canadian. We're going to learn a lot of things. Uh, you're going to understand canine behavior. You're going to gain some insight into your dog's natural instinct and communication signals. You're going to learn effective training, dog training technique uh, using play and praise uh, reward system. You're going to be able to teach uh, basic commands and uh, address your common behavioral issues using this uh, effective technique. You're going to learn how positive uh, reinforcement dog training using play and praise is and how beneficial it is for you and your dog. You're going to have real life applications. You're going to, be going to explore practical training scenarios and you're going to learn how to apply training techniques to everyday situation. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the session as well. So if you're interested, uh, I have the link in the chat area. And in a moment, I'm going to also add it to the uh, description of this uh, live session. I think maybe after we are done with the live session, I'm going to add that as well. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask your questions in the chat area. Uh, and if you want to support the channel as well, uh, make sure to use the super chat. So let's get started. So the the uh, the first thing that I'm going to suggest uh, that you can do with your dog is the game of fetch. Now, fetch is something that many people kind of know it, but they don't do it 
properly. They don't play this game properly. And I want you to learn how to play this game properly. Now, whether you have uh, a puppy, whether you have an adult dog, whether you have a, a new dog or you have a dog who had for years now, uh, doesn't matter. You can follow the same concept here. You have to learn the concept of fetch game. Fetch game is very beneficial. It's very good game to teach any dog. And if you're saying, okay, my dog is not a fetch dog. My dog breed is not a fetch breed. I want to make sure you understand that it doesn't have to do with the breed. Is the it has to do the way with the way that you teach and you uh, practice this game with your dog. No matter what it is, I'm teaching this game to a beagle. Uh, beagles are not fetch dogs either. So if a beagle can learn, any breed can learn, right? So you can teach this game to any dog. First of all, and second of all, if you follow the steps that I'm teaching then you would definitely be able to teach any dog, any age, at any age that they are, you can teach them the fetch game. Number three, if you teach them fetch game, not only you're going to be able to make them to learn and listen to you better, but you're going to be able to get gain a lot from them as well, from your dog. Your dog is going to give you 100% back if you do it properly, if you teach it properly. So let's learn how do we do fetch game, first of all. And then if there are any questions, go ahead and ask me during the, the live session. Okay. This is Annie, my newly adopted puppy. I've just adopted her almost a month ago. Uh, I've taught her a few commands. We are still working on those. But if you're going to play fetch game, you must have the three commands of sit, stay, and recall or come taught to your pup before you play this game. This is very important for you to practice and invest time before you play this fetch game. I suggest you not to play the fetch game before your puppy knows this, and don't play this game until your puppy knows this, because if you play it the wrong way, you're gonna be teaching the wrong things and your puppy is going to pra be practicing the wrong things. So you want to do it properly. So I'm going to show you and demo it how you're going to play fetch game. So Annie, come on. Annie, sit. So I'm going to ask Annie to sit. I'm going to ask Annie to stay. Annie, stay. Annie, go get it. Annie, come. Good girl, yes, yes, good girl, yes. Annie, nope, nope. Good girl, sit, stay. That's how you play a fetch game. Sit, stay, go get it, come, sit, and stay. That's the cycle that you have to repeat when you're playing fetch game. And if you're doing any of those improperly you're doing it the wrong way and if you don't do it properly you're going to teach your puppy the wrong way of playing fetch game so my puppy is in a sit and stay and the game starts as soon as i throw the toy or the ball or whatever your puppy fancies so stay any go get it give the cue of release to go get it Give the cue of coming back. Let her play as much as you want, but make sure Annie come. Annie comes back and brings the toy to you, and you play and interact with your puppy. So your puppy is going to bring the toy to you. If you don't interact, the puppy is not going to come back to you. That's one of the mistakes that dog, dog owners and puppy owners make, is that they don't interact with the puppy interact at least 30 seconds or a minute before you say any no good girl stay go 
cookies. Okay? So the reason she's gonna bring it back because she wants to interact with me. And he come. Good girl, yes. Therefore she comes, therefore she listens to sit, therefore she listens to stay, therefore she comes, okay? So the other tip that I have is don't play this game more than five minutes. If you play more than five minutes, it becomes an obsession, it becomes an addiction. And because of repetition of uh, going back and forth, it will cause a little bit of damage in your puppy physically and mentally as well. So therefore you want to keep it short. If you do it properly, if you play this game properly with your puppy, the way I just showed you, five minutes is more than enough. It's a good physical, mental activity for your puppy, especially if you have a long distance for your puppy to play with. And if you want to learn more, I highly suggest you to... So that's... That's number one. Fetch game is one of the games that I highly su suggest you to play. Now, some additional tips there. Um, if, um, if you are, if you have a puppy, definitely I suggest you to play only five minutes, right? Uh, and that's the reason I suggest you to do that is because I want you to not overdo it with your puppy. I want you to do it in a way that is beneficial and healthy. Five minutes of, uh, you know, fetch game is more than enough for a puppy. Uh, and if you have an older dog, let's say a year or older dog, um, you want to play 15 minutes maximum. Um, if you do it for 15 minutes, it's good enough. You know, your dog learns, practice all these, practices all these commands, sit, stay, calm. Um, plus, you know, it, it, it's physically demanding task as well. And also, when you, when you um, work on a fetch game, for example, for 15 minutes, it's, it's a both physical and mental stimulation, which is much, much, much beneficial and much, much more uh, stimulating. So I highly suggest you... Uh, to go ahead and practice this uh, and again as i said uh, you know you, if you want um, go ahead and learn the concept of fetch game it's very important to learn the concept of fetch game you know what i mean by that is it's important to teach the dog at least those three commands sit stay calm and then make sure that you're following up on those three commands every time you're playing this game. So practice those, you know, when, when you're asking your dog to come, make sure that your dog comes to you. When you're asking your dog to sit and stay, make sure that your dog at least stays for, you know, a minute, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, push your dog, you know, um, and within that 15 minutes, you're practicing maybe five or six or 10 uh, stays of a couple of minutes. And every time you're training your dog and also you're playing with your dog and you're going through all these activities with your dog, you're basically uh, improving your dog's uh, life and you're also stimulating your dog, right? Uh, so as I said, you can go ahead and ask any questions that you have during the live session and I'll be happy to help. Uh, Happy Paws is asking, would you make a video pros and cons of being a dog trainer? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I made a video. I may have a podcast. Um, I may have a podcast, um, but uh, it's a good topic that I may do a podcast. If I haven't done, I will do. I'm not sure if I have done or not, but I will uh, look into it. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, so let's go to the next um, stimulating game that you can play with your dog. And in my opinion, the next one is agility. If you could teach your dog agility, uh, that would be great. Right. In, this is another, um, you know, what I what I feel like you can do is just imagine you have a toolbox and 
uh, fetch game is one of the tools that you have, and agility is another tool that you have. Uh, and agility can help you also to improve your dog's behavior and also your dog's um, overall uh, behavioral issues that it has, if you do it again properly. Now, I'm not saying, you know, to get into competitive style of agility. What I like about agility is that we can simply simplify it and do it at home. Um, I'm going to show you how I would do it at home. We can simplify it and do it at home and improve everything as well. We can use as an opportunity to not only to improve our dog's, you know, commands and behavior, but also lifestyle in general. Uh, many of us are busy, busy dog owners, and we want to do some activities with our dogs that not only are um, not boring and not, uh, um, you know, um, too much for us and too much for our dog. Uh, what we can do is we can um, do activities like this. For example, you can do even agility for 15 minutes at home, and that would be more than enough. You know what I mean? So we're going to learn agility, but uh, Ruby the Beagle is asking a question, what to do when dog detects food at dog park? I'm going to answer this in the next uh, uh, activity that I'm going to show you and teach you. So stay tuned. I'm going to answer that question. So let's get started with agility. And this is how I would do agility at home. Tonight, I'm going to show you the basics and intro introduction to basic agility with the help of my own dog, Harvey. And this is really a very fun way of having a good time with your dog while you're training and teaching your dog. All you need is a couple of books, two or three books, piece of stick that you can find in the woods, um, any piece of metal or something can use the stick from the broom, um, anything. And all you have to do is just pile the books like this and put the stick on top of it, jump on it and do the stuff, fun stuff, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. We're not looking for competitive style jumping. That's later maybe if you wanna do it, but th at the moment, you just wanna have fun. Uh, so we are looking for quality rather than quantity. So we're not looking for height. We're just looking to have a quality of fun time with our dog. You can do it anywhere. You can do it anytime. If it's a rainy day, snowy day, stormy, wintry day, you can go outside. You can set it up and at, in your living room and play this game. Uh, it's more of a mind game if you play it the way I'm going to show you. So, so let's get started. So here I have Harvey. Harvey is kind of familiar with this game, like uh, he's done agility before. So he's familiar with it, but your dog may not be familiar. So what you want to do is you want to put the books and the stick that you're going to select on the ground and ask your dog to sniff it. So, uh, so they are kind of familiar with it. Harvey, come. What's this? So let them smell it, sniff it, get familiar with it, so they're not strange to it. So once they are comfortable and familiar with it, then we can start playing the game. So the first game that we're going to play is we're going to ask our dog to sit. It's better if you your dog has done some obedience. So the first game that we're going to play, we're going to ask our dog to jump off this stick. So Harvey, jump. That's it. That's all we want. Good boy. And celebrate and play with your dog. That's all we want. So here's the important part. You want to ask your dog to sit and stay and then run with your dog beside the jump. So Harvey, jump. There we go. Yes. Good boy. That's it. Sit, stay. So once you've done that a few times, then you can go on the other side of the jump and ask your dog to come. Jump. 
Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Very good. So bring your dog back again. Have you here? Sit. Stay. So again, go on the on the other side of the jump and ask your dog to come to you. Have you jump? Yeah, we go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's the second version. All right, good boy. Now the third version, which is a little bit harder than first and second. How we come? How we sit, stay. It's to send the dog to jump. So how we jump? That's it. That's what we want. Good boy. Yes. Yes. How we sit, stay. How we jump? There we go. That's what we want. Yes. Yes. So you can do this in a way that you're asking your dog to do something and the reward for doing that, whatever you're asking, in this case, I'm asking my dog to sit. When I tell him to sit, the reward for sitting is to jump. We're not using treats. We're not, you don't have to use anything in a way. This is game and the game itself is the reward. So we're asking our dog to sit and the reward for sitting is to jump. It's the fun, it's the game that they get to play with you when they're doing something. If you have a dog who's not uh, comfortable doing this stuff and it's a little bit shy to do it, you can use a toy to ask your dog to do it. Uh, I recommend, highly recommend not to use treats or food. This is not a time to feed the dog. This is a time to play. To play and ask the dog to have fun. When you're playing and training, there is no food involved. So if your dog is having a hard time getting this uh, game, you can use a toy. So you can ask your dog to sit again and they can follow the, the toy if you want. Sit, hurry, jump, jump. Very good, and then they get the toy for reward. Um, <laughs> or what you can do, the other option is you can ask your dog to sit, stay, and set up the toy over here and ask the dog to jump and come and get it. Harvey, jump, jump, get it, yes. So that's the reward again. The toy or the game is the reward. It's so simple and it's so much fun that I can go, me and Harvey, we can do this for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we are both exhausted doing this game. And I highly recommend to do this game, to play this game with your dog anytime you can. It's a very simple fun game, but also it is very productive and it's very effective way of training your dog. Hope you liked it. If you like this video give it a thumbs up yeah if you're enjoying uh, the session so far give it a thumbs up to the video as well uh, share and also um, let everybody know that we are we, you're watching this uh, live session there's a live teaching and training going on uh, and um, we're gonna be you know talking about how to stimulate our dogs uh, so a, a touch on um, agility, um, what I want you to understand is that agility, you know, you could, you if you want, you can go all the way to the, the level that you can literally uh, do competitive style of en agility, just like this, right, you know, which I used to do. Uh, but I stopped doing it uh, many, many years ago uh, because I, uh, you know, personally, I felt that I was being too competitive. The, the passion of the game itself, at, it had gone to the point that I was pushing myself and my dog to different level. I didn't like that concept. I didn't like that, uh, um, that feeling. So that's why I kind of stopped uh, doing agility with my dogs. And I started doing, you know, uh, personal agility um, 
with my dogs. So I have all the equipment and uh, I do still sometimes practice it. But I, you see, like this is this is great, great to watch. You know, you you see this dog running and having fun and doing all this. But if you look behind the scenes, uh, most of these dogs are not having fun. Unfortunately, uh, what happens is uh, when most people are teaching or working on uh, or practicing agility with their dogs, they become very competitive and they push their dogs too much uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. They dedicate a lot of time and energy to this sport. And um, in my opinion, I don't like that, uh, that feeling. I don't like that state of mind. Uh, but if it's something that you enjoy and you want to do it with your dog, and as long as you're having fun, I suggest you go to go ahead and get involved with sport of agility. But overall, myself, uh, I don't recommend to do it in this style. I recommend uh, stimulating your dog uh, using the agility sport as a form of stimulating your dog that you can use on a daily basis to not only train your dog, but improve its health and benefit the, 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 the time that you're spending on your dog's training, uh, you know, 15 minutes a day, let's say, but Obviously, these dogs, they're not practicing only 15 minutes a day. They are practicing a lot more than that, again, which is not healthy. But if, if, you, like, if you like that concept, you can go ahead and, you know, invest in that, uh, invest in that uh, sport. Uh, are you enjoying so f the uh, the show so far? So uh, the Happy Paws has a question. Have you ever thought about traveling and showing your technique? Uh, not really. No. Um, I think uh, it's uh, I'm good at as where as uh, where I am and uh, how I'm doing uh, online and um, um, doing in a way that a um, more um, I would say. Uh, in my home, <laughs> uh, doing uh, doing uh, what I really love, which is teaching, actually, uh, nowadays. All right, so next thing that we're going to talk about is fly ball. Have you heard of the sport of fly ball? Uh, if you haven't, let's get a crash course on fly ball. This is not my own video. It's a someone else's video, but it's a good video to watch and learn this sport. As we are new to fly ball, we should probably get familiar with the basics before jumping into the action. Here's our guide to this adrenaline-filled canine discipline. Fly ball competitions consist of two teams of four dogs each. Each team races in a lane consisting of four jumps and a fly ball box at the end of each lane. The fly ball box pushes a ball towards the dog when the dog lands on the front panel. Each dog must run in relay down the lane, jump all hurdles, retrieve the ball and return over all jumps. The next dog can't cross the start finish line until the previous dog has returned over all four jumps and reached the start finish line. Jump heights are set four inches shorter than the shoulder height of the smallest dog racing in each team. The first team to have all four dogs finish the course without error win the heat. And each race is best of five, so first to three wins. So, so that's a crash course on fly ball, right? So basically, it's a sport that the dog is very... Uh, Hyper excited, and uh, uh, yeah, that's the one. It's very excited, and it's uh, ready to go, and they're just, you know, happy. Very, very noisy sport. It's a very noisy, high intensive sport. I'm not sure if if it's ideal for everybody. But it's something that you can still think of it as stimulating. You can do this at home as well if you do it properly. 
But let's take a look at a sample of this sport and see the feeling, see the emotions. Imagine yourself uh, in there with your dog. Something extraordinary here. Watson's in the red lane. Let's see how, how the roadrunners start this time. Watson's in the red, the roadrunners in the blue. Crazy this sport is, right? So I don't know if it's everybody for everybody, but, you know, it's something that you can still think of it of doing it. But I I recommend if you are really passionate about doing uh, this kind of sport, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, but it's something that it's very um, intensive for you and for the dogs. It becomes a little bit nerve wracking, a little bit too much for a dog. Uh, but it's fun. If your dog is enjoying retrieving and think of it as a way of uh, doing it to stimulate your dog. So next, next is scent games. This is, uh, scent games are games that I would say most dogs will benefit, but I would say you can start still teach your dog um, to, to learn this game. It's not something that every dog is going to be naturally be drawn to it, but uh, you can, li uh, basically you can, um, so what you're going to need is basically a towel. So now I'm borrowing this uh, lesson and this video from uh, someone else as well. Uh, I don't recommend putting kibble in the towel. I would say, you know, finding uh, organic, healthy uh, treats um, instead to put in the towel. Um, one, because uh, you, you don't want your dog to relate your, their food. If you're feeding your dog kibble, you don't want your dog to relate to this game. Um, two, you want to choose a, 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 a treat or something else that, Actually, uh, it's more um, dedicated to this activity. So the treats become a, a, a signal to the dog, oh, we're doing the towel game. Or you can put it in the towel, you can put it in a, um, you know, uh, egg boxes that you have. It's the same thing. As long as uh, something challenging that you can put your dog's uh, treats in there, so your dog has a little bit of challenge to discover the treats and eat it. Um, this is, I think, one of the only times that, one of the very few times that I would suggest using treats to train dogs. I usually don't suggest using treats to train dogs. This is not using treats to train the dog. This is tr using treats to stimulate and challenge the dog. So... This dog is going through a few boxes of egg boxes, like, um, and maybe one of them only had treats or two of them had treats. So this is something that, again, you can always um, challenge your dog and you can make it even difficult, more difficult. And then, you know, the towel is wrapped uh, around the, the box itself. I really love this challenge. I'm I'm going to actually practice this with my own dogs as well. Um, I'm going to make a game out of it as well. We have lots of towels. We have lots of uh, uh, egg uh, boxes that we can do. You can use plastic uh, box uh, glass glass jars as well. Um, you just put it in there without the lid uh, and just uh, let the dog figure out uh, how to get the, the, the treats out of the, the bottle. So these are, these are you know, fun um, scent games. And you can actually, uh, I, I would always suggest to monitor your dog, you know, at least in the beginning, if you're introducing this game to your dog, at least you want to make sure that... Um, um it's it's something that um i would say uh, safe just to make sure uh that your dog figures it out figures it out and um understands what the concept of the game is right 
Um, so you want to make sure that um, your dog is kind of safe around that game before you let it do it on its own. So uh, now we're gonna go to the next uh, scent game that I was gonna I'm gonna share. Now th this has to do uh, with uh, Ruby the Beagle's question that what to do when dog detects food at the dog park. So uh, I'm gonna relay I'm gonna connect the answer to this question with another game that I created and I call it my own scent game uh, which we're gonna watch and learn how to solve this problem and also it's another way of stimulating your dog it's another way another game that you can actually play to stimulate your dog let's go for it and here Annie has her favorite toy and she's gonna grab it now I'm gonna say Annie no that's what we want. We want her to drop the ball and whatever it's in their mouth. Any no? So one of the challenges uh, when, with dogs is when they grab on something, they you want to let let them ask them to let it go. Like if they are walking on the street or somewhere uh, or at home and your dog is uh, picked a chicken bone or something and you want your dog to drop it. This is, uh, you know, this is one of the trainings that I do with my dogs is I teach them no and no means stop that behavior. And in this case, no means drop the ball. Your dog is intelligent enough, smart enough to figure these all these things out. So I've taught my dog no and my dog is, in this case, has a ball in his mouth and I'm saying no and my dog leaves it, drops it. And instead of me saying drop it or off or leave it or this or that, I just say no, I use one word and it means everything. So that's what is happening in this uh, scenario. And he no. Do you see, as soon as I say no, she re lets go of that toy. Now, the next step of uh, working on this issue is to create a obstacle course. Now, before I get started, I wanna show you what I have here. So I have some random rocks. I have some treats in a can. Uh, I have some yummy raw chicken necks in a container with the lid on. Uh, I have some kibble in a bag and some random uh, toys uh, with different shapes and sizes uh, and colors and textures for my dog to get really interested in. Okay, we're all set. So I have the course set up. And what I'm going to do, uh, I have the lids on my container of the treats. I have the rocks there, I have kibble, I have uh, chicken necks in a container with the lid on. This is level one of the obstacle course. So I'm going to start with level one of obstacle course. I'm going to ask my dog to walk with me on my right side away from the obstacles. I'm going to see how she does. Trust me, we haven't done this exercise before, so she doesn't know exactly what is going on. She did pretty good. This time, I'm gonna ask her to walk close to the obstacles. She's doing pretty good. Nope, nope, Annie, nope. Good girl. What I'm gonna do is, she's doing very well. She's not getting distracted by those. I'm going to put her away, and this time I'm going to open up the lids and uh, open up the food so it is more enticing for Annie. We are ready for the next level of obstacle course. This time the foods are open, and I'm going to ask her to walk away from the obstacles. 
As you can see, she can still smell them, sniff them in the air, and she knows exactly what they smell and what they are. So this time, she's not even good, good girl, yes. She's doing pretty good, and she's not getting distracted, or nope, nope, honey, nope, good girl. And I'm going to stop by. So you saw there, uh, that was that was the chicken necks that she stopped by, right? Or, Do you see there? Nope. She detected chicken necks. Uh, other stuff didn't really distract her, but the chicken necks really got her. Oh, wow, there's a yummy treat there. And... This is when the training comes in handy, the effects of the training. You know, you shouldn't be training at this stage. This is a test to your dog. You're testing your dog. You're practicing this behavior with your dog. You're allowing your dog to use its scents, uh, scent um, powers and uh, get used to the idea. I'm preparing my dog at home using this setting up this obstacle course so when we are outside in a real scenario and my dog comes ac across uh, the similar situation in this case you know chicken neck right there are a lot of ne uh, happens to be chicken bones usually you know birds and chicken bones there, there has been situations that I've been walking my dogs and there has been a dead bird that has uh, um, disappeared and just the bones I have left behind. And uh, my dog has been attracted to that uh, scent. Uh, so that moment I say my dog's name and no, and dog stops, right? So... This is a good exercise to do at home to prepare your beagle or your dog to be ready for the real scenario. And in here, you know, as you can see, Annie got distracted and the only reason that she didn't go for it was because I was saying no to her. And that no is, is life safer saver right uh you know if if we come across something that is really dangerous and poisonous or can be dangerous for my dog uh, i can say no and as you can see you know my my dog's jumping by the way if you see my dog jumping on me you you would you have seen harvey jumping on me annie jumping on me for me personally I don't mind them jumping on me. That's our celebration. That's the way I celebrate with my dogs. And that's the way my dog, dogs celebrate with me that they've done something really good. You, if you don't like your dogs to jump on you, you can celebrate differently. But that's the way I celebrate with my dogs. And uh, as you can see in here, uh, as soon as I say no to my dog, and my dog realizes that she's done a great job. She celebrates that with me with jumping. Good, good girl, yes. She jumps on She's me. doing pretty good. And she's not getting distracted or, nope, nope, honey, nope, good girl. And I'm going to stop by the, nope. Okay, good girl. I'm gonna pause around here to see if she's gonna think about it twice. Good girl, yeah! This is her, when she jumps on me, that's her uh, sign that she is very happy. She's happy that I am happy, right? So that's our uh, celebration. So she's doing well. So I'm going to have to work on this a longer 
time and a little bit more. Every few days, I'm going to have to set up this obstacle course and practice with her. So one thing that improves this situation and this issue is improving the walk. So I want you to watch this video to learn how to improve the walk. So that, that was uh, the, the concept uh, for, from my point of view of scent work and also how to, uh, how to deal with when you come across uh, a situation that your dog is uh, dealing with, uh, picking up stuff uh, on, the, on the ground. So that's my other uh, tip that I have uh, that I highly suggest to invest in scent games and uh, work on scent games. Now, next, let's go to the next uh, stimulating game that I suggest. So the next stimulating game that I highly suggest is, let me see. Yeah, uh, it's leash walking. Simple leash walking. Now, many dog owners, uh, they have a hard time walking their dog. But I want to share with you some tips and ideas that uh, can help you to have a more stimulating walk with your dog. Now, the better idea is to take your beagle somewhere that it can sniff the nature. That's what they're bred for. So when you go to a places like that, you know, parks, areas that are in park setting, more natural setting, then you will have a better time with your beagle. So what you're going to do in that case is you're going to attach a long leash to your beagle and you're going to allow your beagle to just do whatever it wants on a long leash. The good thing about having a, your beagle on long leash is that you can control it. You can, if it gets into trouble, you can grab it and bring it back. So just a side note here, you saw me uh, you see Annie on a leash and Harvey off leash. Uh, the reason I'm doing this uh, is because, let me bring that scene. So there's Harvey off leash and Annie is on leash. <clears throat> the reason I do that is because I've already worked on Harvey. I'm 100% confident in Harvey that he's going to be off leash and he's going to do very well. I have 100% confidence in Harvey. But because Annie had just adopted her and I was still working on her and I was training her, so I had her on a leash, on a long leash that she drags the leash, right? So that's if it, not a way of the it, grab it and bring it back. The reason, again, I have her on a long leash is because I don't trust her. She's not ready to be fully off leash. And I want to make sure that she's safe and secure. So if she gets into trouble, I can gra grab the long leash and bring it, bring her back to me and uh, save her from making a you know, big uh, life mistake. So you can do the same thing with your dog. You can l literally... If you could, you could put your dog in a car, drive to a park that you know there is going to be less people, less dogs maybe, less act, act, nothing much happens in that park. You can invest in a long leash or a long rope and just attach your dog on that and just go for a, you know, exploring uh, walk. Uh, that's a very stimulating uh, activity for a dog if compared to being on leash and walked on the streets or walked in a park either. Also, um, walking like this, uh, uh, dragging the leash and being free to walk and um, exercise and sniff and do whatever they are bred to do is more stimulating than walking on a short leash, obviously. So I highly suggest you to invest in that every day. Take your dog. Every You don't have to take your dog every day to a park like this and walk them like this, you know. You can take them, you know, at least two or three times a week. You can invest the time, you know, take them for 20 minutes, half an hour, walk like this. It's very 
good and beneficial. You can control and manage it, but you're giving that freedom to your beagle to sniff and explore exactly the way it needs to. And it's in a safe environment, it's in a safe form. Most beagles are friendly dogs and they want to meet other dogs and greet them. And if you tighten the leash, the regular leash, and stop them from meeting other dogs or saying hi to other dogs, that's when that stress and anxiety and aggression develops. That's when that those behaviors start getting worse and worse. So to avoid all those, just put a long leash on your beagle and take it for a walk and let your beagle greet other dogs the way it is meant to, the way it has to be met, the way they should be connecting to each other and communicating to each other naturally without being stressed and pulled on the leash. That will reduce all that drama when it comes to beagles and other dogs, as well as people, as well as the nature itself. So use a long leash. My next tip is make sure that you're in the moment as well. Put away your phone, put away your coffee, be in the moment, be in the nature with your beagle, enjoy the walk, be present, enjoy the nature, enjoy your beagle sniffing around, have fun with it, have, have a good time allowing your beagle to just be a beagle. Every half an hour that you're taking your beagle for a walk is a moment for you to skate. Have a 30 minutes of off time. So as you're giving your beagle an off time, give yourself an off time as well. So you're focused on your beagle, you're focused on the nature, you're focused on the walk, you're focused to be in the moment. Now, to even more, so I hope that makes sense. You know, one of the things also that you have to understand is very important, not only be present in the moment and uh, enjoy the walk yourself and allow your dog to enjoy the walk, but understand every 15 minutes that your dog sniffs and walks like that is equal Believe it or not, it's equal to two hours of running and hiking with your dog. A 15-minute walk of stimulating walk, of sniffing and doing whatever the dog wants to do is equal to two hours of physical hiking, and running and jogging in the mountains. So it's that effective, it's that important, right? So... It's up to you how much you want to invest in your dog, right? You have all these options of investing and improving your dog's life. You can invest in playing proper fetch game with your dog, the way I taught you today. You can include some agility during the week, uh, once or twice a week. You can add some form of agility in your dog's activities at home, um, in the backyard, neighbor's home, whatever, wherever is possible. You can do fly ball if you like to. That's a little bit extreme, but you can still uh, use the concept of fly ball and practice it at home. You can create those scent games that I just shared with you and stimulate your dog. But the best stimulation, I would say, in my opinion, is the leash walking um, as well. But I like I like them all. I do them all, most of them all, most of the all these activities with my dog. And it's something that I enjoy doing it. And it's something that um, I I recommend dog owners to do it. By the way, if you are interested in my upcoming live workshop, uh, Mastering Dog Training Essentials, a crash course for busy dog owners, uh, which is going to be on Thursday, April 25th, 2024 at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's $29.99 Canadian. Uh, and all the information and for to learn more and to register for this workshop i have the link in the description of this video you can find it there um, and 
uh, hope to see you there. Uh, all the information is on the uh, on the website on the page itself, but um, you can register now. Uh, is there any other questions that you have regarding today's topic and regarding everything that we talked about and the workshop and uh, everything else uh, that is going on? I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. I My goal today was to give you some ideas of um, becoming a, a little bit of, a, I would say, an educated dog owner, right? Uh, that is able to provide some healthy and um, beneficial forms of uh, stimulating your dog. Uh, if you got some um, ideas and benefits from this live session, go ahead and like, hit the like button. And if you enjoy what you're seeing and enjoy learning more and becoming an educated dog owner, using my method and solve all your dog training prog uh, problems. Uh, you can overcome your dog's common behavioral issues without the use of treats or force or domination. Uh, I have a program that I'm very proud of it. Uh, I'm taking in some students at the moment. Uh, you can apply for it. Again, the link to apply to work with me is in the description. Uh, all you have to do is set up a video call and we go from there. Uh, let me make sure that I didn't miss any questions. Uh, there was a comment from Anna V. It says, thank you for sharing more on scent games. Agility would be too much for my couch potato. Her two walks a day are all the exercise she enjoys. That's that's great. You know, walking is uh, another, as I said, it's another one of the most beneficial uh, forms of stimulating your dog. And if your dog enjoys that, that's great. And if you want to kick it up a notch and again, you know, uh, agility, I'll see, I think, um, you know, it's, it, I wouldn't call any dog couch potato. It's, uh, it's something that, you know, you can motivate them to do it, you know, if they are happy to do it um, and if they like it go ahead and offer them you know try it give it a try see if it's something that you like to do it and if your dog is going to like to do it most of the time the humans are the cause of uh, not doing activities with their dogs you know most of the time humans are the ones who are lazy to get involved with some activity with their dogs but you know, if you're not lazy, if you offer it with your for your dog and your dog enjoys it, go ahead and do it. If you see that, okay, you're not enjoying, the dog is not enjoying, then that's fine. Uh, give it up. Um, there was another comment that I kind of quickly uh, mentioned it. Uh, Happy Paws was asking, have you ever thought about traveling and showing your techniques? No, I'm happy with... Um, doing everything that in this day and age we can use technology and be everywhere at any time. Uh, and if somebody wants to find me, I'm available online and they can find me. I don't have to travel anymore. Uh, less pollution, less, less um, uh, headache for me to leave my dogs home behind or take them with me. Uh, no, it's, it's just something that I wouldn't do it. Um, and thank you for the idea of making a video of uh, about pros and cons of being a dog trainer. I'm not sure if I have a video of it or not. Uh, I, I will check my podcast. I think I've done it. I'm not sure, but I'll, uh, I'll consider uh, making one, actually. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining in today. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, program. Uh, today's live session. Uh, if you, there are any other questions that I didn't get to answer or you have any additional answer and you're watching this video afterwards, go ahead and ask them in the comments area. I'll read them all and I'll answer them all uh, always. Uh, if you enjoyed this live session, give it a thumbs up, share, and also let me know in the comments area, did you enjoy today's uh, session? Which one of the sports that I, um, or activities or the games that I um, mentioned today, you most likely are going to uh, 
do with your dog and uh, if you enjoyed any of the games that I shared. Uh, if there are any other, ga other games that you like to play with your dogs. And until next time, have fun with your dog and enjoy your um, enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you next time. And until next time, have fun with your dog. Thank you.